So we've talked at some length about the ideal gas law, where if we assume that if a gas in a container is behaving like an ideal gas, and the key assumptions there are that there's no forces between the actual gas molecules, and that the volume of the gas molecules is negligible, especially when we think about it relative to uh, the container. Well, in that case, we can assume we're dealing with something that's kind of ideal, and we can apply the ideal gas law, that the pressure times the volume is going to be equal to the number of moles times the ideal gas law, <laughs> times the ideal gas constant, times temperature measured in Kelvin. But we've also talked about in other videos is that, well, real gases don't behave that, and especially uh, as they approach their condensation point, real gases aren't always, you can't always make these assumptions about them. And so what we're going to explore in this video is how we might be able to adapt the ideal gas law so it's, it's a better description of what happens with real gases. And in particular, we are going to explore the van der Waals equation, named for van der Waals, same guy who came up with the idea of van der Waals forces, one of those attractive forces that make it hard or make real gases start to defy assumption number one a little bit. And what van der Waals went about doing is saying, well, let me see if I can modify this P, this P part right over here and this V part, so it better describes real gases. And to understand the logic of the van der Waals equation, which we're going to see in a second, let's, let's think about how we might want to modify P, and then we'll think about how we want, would want to modify V. So let's give ourselves a container. Let's put some uh, gas molecules in that container. So I got some gas molecules here. And remember, pressure is force per unit area. And the pressure here is going to come from the collisions between the gas, the collisions uh, from the gas molecules bouncing off of the walls of the container. Every time they do that, they're going to exert a little bit of force on that, on that area. And so you know, that's why the more temperature you have, these things are going to move around faster. You're going to have more frequent collisions. The more molecules you have, you're going to have more things to bounce around. And so those are things that if you have more of them, you're going to increase the pressure, especially if you're holding your volume constant. Now this is assuming an ideal gas, but think, let's think about how things would change if we had a real gas where you did have, let's say, attractive forces between them. Let's say they're van der Waals forces. So if you have attractive forces between the actual gas molecules, and we'll also assume that the molecules are not attracted to the walls of the container, which isn't always the case. Sometimes they're more attracted to the walls of the container. But let's assume that they're not attracted to the walls of the container. Well, the molecules in the middle, they're going to be attracted, and we're, we're going to assume that they're uniformly distributed about the the volume. The ones in the middle, they're going to be pulled in every direction, and so there's not going to be really a significant net force. But the ones near the side of the container, so let's say a molecule right over here, well, that, that's going to have most of, its, uh, most of its fellow molecules are going to, in this case, be to its left. And so those are the ones that it's going to be attracted to. So in this case, there's not going to be too many or any, in this case, to the right of it. And so it's going to have a net inward, a net inward force. Similarly, this one up here would have a net inward force. This one right over here would have a net inward force. And the closer we get to the center, it's going to start diminishing a little bit. But as you can see, because of this attractive force, these things are more likely to maybe gravitate a little bit more towards the center than ricochet off the side. They still will ricochet off the side. These things are buzzing around, super chaotic, you know, everywhere, bouncing. But if there's some small attractive force, they might be a little bit more likely to, be, to move towards the center than to, to bounce off the walls of the container. And so and we talked about this in a previous video. It's reasonable that if you hold everything constant, that the real pressure, the pressure real, is going to be less than the ideal pressure because of, in this case, this attractive force. But van der Waals said, well, can I quantify this difference? Well, what if we say the real pressure, we know it's going to be less than the ideal pressure because of the attractive forces. The real pressure is going to be equal to the ideal pressure minus, and we try to find, figure out some expression that helps us take into account uh, th these, these net forces, especially from things that are closer to the boundaries. Well, for every gas, it's going to be different depending on how they interact with each other. So let's just put a little constant in there and say, all right, well, for any one of these molecules, the, the, the net inward force is going to be proportional to just how many molecules it has in the container, so especially the density. So it's going to be. And the density is the number of moles divided by the volume. And that would be for any one of these molecules. But obviously, we have many molecules. And that the number of molecules is also going to be related to the density. So you'd want to multiply 
times the density again. So you could view this as, okay, we're kind of taking into consideration any one molecule, but then we have a bunch of molecules that are all going to have a little bit of an inward force to different degrees. And we have this proportionality factor that helps us take into consideration uh, the, the, the type of gas that we might be dealing with. And so you have this notion that the real pressure could be equal to the ideal pressure minus A times N over V squared. Or we can algebraically manipulate this add, the, this, add this to both sides of the equation. And we could get that the real pressure plus A times N over V squared is equal to the ideal pressure. Now what's interesting about this is, Van der Waals says, well, if I assume that this is ideal pressure and this is ideal volume, well, maybe I could just replace the P sub I, the ideal pressure, with this thing right over here. And that's what he does. So we're going to slowly reconstruct the Van der Waals equation. So instead of that, he has P sub the real pressure plus, and this looks like this wacky stuff, hard to understand, but hopefully this makes a little bit of sense, that look, the real pressure is going to be less than the ideal pressure. It's going to be the ideal pressure minus something. Or you could say that the ideal pressure is going to be the real pressure plus something. And that plus something is related to the density of the actual molecules. And it's going to be, there's going to be some constant for, that's given for that, that gas. And every t I've only seen positive ones here, which imply an attractive force. But uh, if you had a repulsive, but I, well, I won't even want to get into that. I've only seen attractive, uh, I've only seen positive A values used for actual gases. So they're really talking about attractive forces there. And then we're going to do something about the volume. We're going to do something about the volume right over here. So we're going to have the real, the volume sub real. We're going to add or subtract something. And then this is going to be equal to nRT. Now let's think about how we'd want to adjust real volume relative to ideal volume. So let me draw another container really quickly. So in this container, I'm going to challenge assumption two. And we're going to assume that these molecules, that their volume is not negligible. And so in this situation, holding everything else constant, if you wanted the same pressure and everything else is constant, your real volume, in order to have the same pressure, is going to have to be larger. The real volume, V sub R, is, needs to be greater than the ideal volume. Why does it have to be greater? Well, in order to have, if you don't make the volume greater, these things are going to bump into each other a lot more, and because they're, they're each taking up a lot more space than you would have assumed if we, than you would have assumed under the negligible volume assumption. So if you want to, and so if they're bumping into each other a lot more and ricocheting off of each lot more, if you the if you held the volume constant, you would have more pressure. But if you want to hold the pressure constant, well, you got to make the volume bigger. The real volume has to be greater than the ideal volume. And by how much? Well, the real volume could be equal to the ideal volume. And you just need to make space for the volume of the actual molecules. So the ideal volume plus space for the actual molecules. And so we could multiply some constant times the number of molecules measured in moles. And this B would be related to essentially the size of the molecules. You can even think of it as kind of a bigness factor. You can think of this as a bit of an attractive factor, and this is a bigness factor. And once again, algebraically manipulating this, you would get the real volume minus the volume of our actual molecules is equal to the ideal volume. And we can go back and substitute that in. This whole thing is the ideal volume. So the ideal volume is equal to the real volume minus some proportionality constant times the number of molecules measured in moles. And this thing that I have just generated, this is the Van der Waals equation. And the reason why I went through this little, little, hopefully conceptual experiment, thinking through it, is that at first when you see it, it looks really, really, really daunting until you realize that this first thing, this first thing right over here, that's just the ideal pressure. And then the second thing is the ideal volume. And then we make adjust, adjustments between the ideal and the real based on, okay, maybe we have some forces between the particles. And yeah, we have to take into account the actual volume of the particles. And once again, the Van der Waals equation, it is not perfect, but it's the one that is typically given as a, as a, the, a, 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 next, a, a next version to, to get a little bit more real than the ideal gas law. You can continue to modify this. You can do computer models. You can do all sorts of things. 
And that'd get you even more exact, but the Van der Waals equation is a good start.